divine intervention. Divine intervention, it's the involvement, yes, of divine in, in the affairs of humans. Divine intervention. You heard me say this before. You got this x-ray and the doctors are looking at this x-ray here and they said, well, we need to bring in a specialist. And then when they bring in the specialist and then they show the specialist uh, this x-ray. Yeah, so the specialist is looking at the same x-ray that they're looking at. And then they see something in this x-ray. They do a CAT scan and they see something in the CAT scan. They do an MRI and they see something in the MRI but then they take another x-ray and when they this x-ray or they do an ultrasound something has changed wait a minute but we got this one here this one said she got it but we got this one this one said you don't have it and so we do another one that one says you don't have it well what in the world happened did somebody make a mistake no nobody made a mistake it is divine intervention God done got in the mix God done moved a miracle has happened for you somebody ought to clap your hand now and praise the Lord understand this that the impossible is still possible but tell your neighbor the impossible is still possible so understand this Understand this, all your no's, all your no's are about to become yeses. I prophesy, people who have turned you down, people who would not approve you, are going to just call you out of nowhere and ask you, are you still interested? If you're not believing him for a miracle, what is it that you are expecting to take place in your life? Understand that miracles just don't happen. You have to position yourself for a miracle. A miracle is a surprising event. A miracle is a surprising event that is not explainable by scientific law. What did I just say? A miracle is what? Now hold it, stop. How many of you just like surprises? Come on, tell the truth. How many of you like surprises? How many of you love it when God surprises you? How many of you love it when God do something that you won't expect him or he do something that he didn't tell you he was going to do? A miracle is a surprising event that is not explainable by scientific law. Hmm? Come on, you, come on, you know you got, you know you have a, a mountain of debt. And you've been hearing prophet songs talk about that's about to be a wealth transfer and that's about to be a wealth shifting and and uh, you've been believing God to get out of debt but well, understand you can't go home tonight and then the first thing tomorrow morning you on the phone calling up Equifax and you telling Equifax my name is so and so and uh, here is my social security number and uh, the prophet told us the prophet told us that God said that he was going to, to cancel our debts but what I want to know is can you y'all just go ahead and remove all those negative items out of my credit file so I can apply for me a credit card today and they're gonna be like ma'am we we can't do that but understand this when you know that is there come on come on when you know that you have bad credit and you know that your score is 400 and, and you know I'm gonna go ahead and preach without you and you know that your score is 500 but then all of a sudden you get a letter saying or an email saying that that your credit file has changed and when you look inside that credit file and you see that your score has now gone up to 720 what in the world has happened three four five six seven eight sundays from now three four five six don't mess with me when I'm in the anointing. Why well, want to know what your response going to be? Three, four, five, six, seven. The next eight Sundays. When you come here talking about well, something going on. I ain't getting no more bill. And uh, they sent me uh, This was paid. And I know I ain't. I don't tell you what God said he's going to do. At the end of every seven years. Thou shalt make a release. And this is a man release every creditor that lendeth unto his neighbor shall not exact it of his neighbor 
called the Lord's release. If God made the knees, he can heal the knees. I don't care what it is you're going through today. I'm here to tell you that God can heal you today. You keep on believing and trusting him. And every day that you get up, you decree every day, I'm healed because God says I'm healed. Legs get right. Feet get right. Ankles get right. Head get right. Arms get right. Lungs get right. Heart gets right. You got to speak to yourself and decree a miracle if you are expecting a good outcome I'm gonna close this it's gonna take a miracle from God for you to get a good outcome tell your neighbor what I just said everywhere he went God was with Jesus to heal the sick understand there's a lot of people in the Bible who had demons and demonic activity that was going on in their life are y'all hearing me understand this it's not that just it's not just that that you are just sick some of you feel like I'm just sick prophet I'm just sick no it's not that you are just sick no it's because of demonic activity or demonic spirits that need to be cast out of you that's why when Jesus was dealing with the person daughter who was dumb he said dumb spirit it is the spirit that makes a person dumb a lot of time we think that we're dealing with the person we think that we're dealing with the people but no we're dealing with demons or we're dealing with demonic activity it's not the person it's a demonic spirit that's why paul said for we wrestle not against can i preach in this church for we wrestle not against flesh and blood but against principalities demonic force powers demonic force rulers of darkness demonic force spiritual wickedness in high places demonic so you got to understand divine intervention with man it's impossible man's extremity becomes god's opportunity what are you saying to me your situation right now is a good time for god's opportunity to do something and to get glory out of it what you saying to me prophet you ain't going through what you've been going through for nothing something is about to break something is about to break in your life you are about to see the move of God you are about to see the hand of God things are getting ready to get better for you somebody believe that clap your hand matter of fact jump on your feet and turn around one time hurry up hurry up sit down sit down sit down you have to go into every situation knowing I'm gonna have divine intervention it might not be right this minute. it might not be right this second but I already know I'm gonna have divine intervention Jesus looked at them and said, Jesus looked at them and said, with man, this is impossible. But with God, all things are possible. Did y'all hear what I said? With man, this is impossible. But with God, all things are possible. I prophesy people who have turned you down people who would not approve you are going to just call you out of nowhere and ask you are you still interested if nobody tried Jamil you, you go try that too understand this if you are not believing God for a miracle if you are not believing God for a miracle then tell me this what is it that you are expecting to happen if you're not believing him for a miracle what is it that you are expecting to take place in your life understand that miracles just don't happen you have to position yourself for a miracle what did I just say what did I just say understand 
understand this about divine intervention. Divine intervention is the involvement, yes, of divine in, in the affairs of humans. Divine intervention. You heard me say this before. You got this x-ray and the doctors are looking at this x-ray here and they said, well, we need to bring in a specialist. And then when they bring in the specialist and then they show the specialist uh, this x-ray. Yeah. So the specialist is looking at the same x-ray that they're looking at. And then they see something in this x-ray. They do a CAT scan and they see something in the CAT scan. They do an MRI and they see something in the MRI but then they take another x-ray and when they this x-ray or they do an ultrasound something has changed wait a minute but we got this one here this one says she got it but we got this one this one said you don't have it and so we do another one that one says you don't have it well what in the world happened did somebody make a mistake no nobody made a mistake it is divine intervention God done got in the mix God done moved a miracle has happened for you somebody ought to clap your hand now and praise the Lord a miracle is a surprising event we're not going to touch I wish we could touch the name after a while we're going to be able to push people again a miracle is a surprising event that is not explainable by scientific law what did I just say a miracle is what now hold it stop how many of you just like surprises Come on, tell the truth. How many of you like surprises? Amen. Well, what do y'all like then? Surprises. Put your hand down. But some folks are not saying nothing. Either you do or you don't. How many of you like surprises? How many of you love it when God surprised you? Hmm? How many of you love it when God do something? Are y'all, did y'all come to our church? What y'all come to? How many of you love it when God do something that you won't expect him or he do something that he didn't tell you he was going to do? A miracle is a surprising event that is not explainable by scientific law. Hmm? Come on, you, come on, you know you got, you know you have a, a mountain of debt. And you've been hearing prophet Saul talk about that's about to be a wealth transfer and that's about to be a wealth shifting. And, and uh, you've been believing God to get out of debt. But understand, you can't go home tonight and then the first thing tomorrow morning, you on the phone calling up Equifax and you telling Equifax, my name is so and so and uh, here is my social security number. And uh, the prophet told us, the prophet told us that God said that he was going to, to cancel our debts. But what I want to know is, can and y'all just go ahead and remove all those negative items out of my credit file so I can apply for me a credit card today and they're going to be like ma'am we we can't do that <laughs> how many of y'all hear me but understand this when you know that it's there come on come on when you know that you have bad credit and you know that your score is 400 and, and you know I'm going to go ahead and preach without you and you know that your score is 500 but then all of a sudden you get a letter saying or an email saying that, that your credit file has changed and when you look inside that credit file and you see that your score has now gone up to 720 what in the world has happened divine intervention I want to know what's going to be your response Three, four, five, six, seven, eight Sundays from now. Three, four, five, six. Don't mess with me when I'm in the anointing. Well, I want to know what your response is going to be. Three, four, five, six, seven. The next eight Sundays. 
When you come here talking about, well, something going on, I ain't getting no more bill. And uh, they sent me something about this was paid, and I know it ain't bad. Well, shut your mouth, hush. I don't tell you what God said he's going to do. At the end of every seven years, thou shalt make a release. And this is a matter of release. Every creditor that lendeth unto his neighbor shall not exact it of his neighbor. It's called the Lord's release. you coming out of debt. Your money has been going in debt. When you are a borrower, the Bible says, the borrower are slaves to the lender you can rebuke it all you want you under your lender's control you got to get from under your lender's control tell somebody what I just said you pay bills before you tithe because you don't understand how God's system works understand this until you understand money God can't give it to you you they broke. You're going to struggle all your life until you understand money. Understand that when you do not tither, if you are not a tither, if you do not return the 10% of what God has given you, you cannot handle money. How you talking about, oh girl, I can, I, I can stand to be a millionaire. You can't handle a dime. You still struggling with a dime. How you going to handle a million? Stop wasting your money going and play the lottery. You ain't hitting. Come on, come on now, Lord. We want to use the Lord to help you do more evil than you, you already been doing. Evil. But you have to understand, you can't even tell your family. You can't even tell your friends. You can't even tell your co-workers. Prophet said, the Lord, we're going to get out of debt. They're going to be like, girl, you ain't getting out of no debt. Because they do not understand divine intervention. Now don't sit here and act like God ain't never healed you before. Divine, come on. And eventually, if God made the knees, he can heal the knees. I don't care what it is you're going through today. I'm here to tell you that God can heal you today. You keep on believing and trusting him. And every day that you get up, you decree every day, I'm healed because God says I'm healed. Legs get right. Feet get right. Ankles get right. Head get right. Arms get right. Lungs get right. Heart gets right. You got to speak to yourself and decree a miracle. Somebody clap your hands in here and praise the Lord. If you are expecting a good outcome, I'm going to close this. It's going to take a miracle from God for you to get a good outcome. Tell your neighbor what I just said. Do you understand that just because We'll get to this at some point where you, we've got to break generational curses. Just because somebody in your family had this doesn't mean that you have to have it. See, you speak a lot of negative. Well, when I get old, I know I'm going to be like y'all. What do you expect? You, you, you already preparing yourself for something to happen in your life that does not have to happen. How many of y'all hearing what I'm saying? Understand this, miracles are, miracles are nothing new uh, throughout Jesus' ministry. Jesus, the Bible says that he went about healing all that were oppressed of the devil, for God was with him. Are you hearing me? Everywhere he went, God was with Jesus to heal the sick. Understand, there's a lot of people in the Bible who had demons and demonic activity that was going on in their life. Are y'all hearing me? Understand this. It's not that just it's not just that that you are just sick. Some of you feel like I'm just sick, prophet. I'm just sick. No, it's not that you are just sick. No, it's because of demonic activity or demonic spirits that need to be cast out of you. I wish I could prove something to you. Maybe there'll be a chance I will. We'll all meet and we'll go to the hospital 
and we'll go to the psychiatric ward. And when I walk inside the psychiatric ward, I want you to watch how people start approaching me and watch what they start doing. What are they going to do, prophet? Act the fool? Why? Because the demon know he got to come out? That's why when Jesus was dealing with the person, daughter, who was dumb, he said, dumb spirit. It is the spirit that makes a person dumb. Are you hearing me? A lot of time we think that we're dealing with the person, we think that we're dealing with the people, but no, we're dealing with demons or we're dealing with demonic activity. It's not the person, it's the demonic spirit. That's why Paul said, For we wrestle not against, can I preach in this church? For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, demonic force powers demonic force rulers of darkness demonic force spiritual wickedness in high places demonic you can't you can't see the demons but you can they will make you feel their impact you know when something is not right in your atmosphere you be like something's not right i feel a heaviness i feel a warfare i feel a tightness demonic activity you can't, fight, you can't fight the devil in the physical. He'll beat you. He'll hit you side of the head and you, and you be trying to find him. And then he'll hit you side of the left side of your head. You can't fight the devil like that. You got to understand. Your enemy, your enemy is spiritual. And so you got to deal with him on a spiritual level. You spiritual. You are spiritual. You were created in the image of God. You are spiritual. You, hello, you ain't nothing but a spirit. Hello, spirit. I'm what? You're a spirit. Take the spirit out of the body. God said, okay, you can have the body. Get my spirit. What the body gonna do? Nothing. Understand, you are a spirit. And the spirit lives in the body. Are, are you hearing me? So a lot of time we, we take it personal. We take it personal. You just a liar. You're a liar. You're a liar. No, they have a lying spirit. It is the spirit that makes them lie. So if we cast the lying spirit out of them. <laughs> they'll start telling the truth. Y'all don't like this kind of preacher. I'm going to stop. So you got to understand divine intervention. With man, it's impossible. Man's extremity becomes God's opportunity. What are you saying to me? Your situation right now is a good time for God's opportunity to do something and to get some glory out of it. What you saying to me, prophet? You ain't going through what you've been going through for nothing. Something is about to break. Something is about to break in your life. You are about to see the move of God. You are about to see the hand of God. Things are getting ready to get better for you. Somebody believe that. Clap your hands. Matter of fact, jump on your feet and turn around one time. Hurry up, hurry up. Sit down, sit down, sit down. It's with, with man it's impossible those of you who are watching my YouTube on the World Wide Web, Facebook or wherever you're watching, doctors don't go to school, they don't tell them in medical school that God is going to give you a miracle, they'll talk in medical school, write the prescription, write out the prescription and you don't know what it says it's some scribble mess, what is that? for tightness in the neck, poor muscle so I'm going to prescribe you some painology You be like, some pain what? <laughs> pain of silly, I'm going to prescribe. I never heard of it before. <laughs> but you take it. That's what they do. They're they not going to tell you, brother, um, you, you, you've had divine intervention. Uh, brother, um, God has touched you. Oh, Baba Shata. God done, oop. They're not going to do all that. If you hear a doctor say, Oh, you, you know, uh, praise Hello? They don't do none of that. Um, come back and see me in a month. 
take this to the receptionist. You have Blue Cross, don't you? <laughs> you understand? But see, everybody look at me. You have to go into every situation knowing I'm going to have divine intervention. It might not be right this minute. It might not be right this second. But I already know I'm going to have divine intervention. I'm not going to go into a panic attack. I'm not going to start speaking all this negative stuff. I, I'm going to go right to the source. Okay, God, I'm yours. I work for you. I work for the kingdom. I need you to handle this. Why aren't you worried about it? No, I've already given it to the Lord. I've already turned it on over to him. Work it out how you're going to pay your rent. Work it out all your money is spent. Work it out, baby, need a new pair of shoes. Uh, work it out and the light bill, let's do. Work it out waiting on the next paycheck. I ain't got no help in here. That song covers everything. He done, he done worked all that out. Why are you tripping when he done worked all that out? Divine intervention. You about to have divine intervention. So that's why you get attacked. Because the devil knows that God already done told him. And see, that's the powerfulness of the tither. The powerfulness of the tither. When God says, look, when the devil come in, I'm going to rebuke the devourer. I'm going to rebuke a devil. Devil, don't touch David. Devil, do not put your hands on David. David belongs to me. Take your hands off David. Yeah. 